Hello, and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther, and today I'm gonna talk about my four tips for having a fall garden in a small garden. Now, this is my uh, second year gardening. I have a small garden um, because the only place that I can grow plants that produce any that require full sun, which is most summer vegetables, is in the front half of in in my front yard and technically i really only have space in half of that front yard so i have a very limited plus that little tiny area back there but basically i have very little space to grow my uh, garden in and so i thought i would share some of the tips um, that i have for ways to still get some garden crops out of the fall garden even though if like me you might have crammed your garden to the brim with vegetables for the spring and summer before i get going on my tips let me just mention really quickly that if this is your first time thinking about doing a fall garden and the way to figure out if you can grow something in the fall is one you can google the seed that you, you're thinking about growing if you don't have the package the, the actual label on it but almost all of them have a car alarm <laughs> Almost all of them have a days to maturity on it, um, which is the days until you can start harvesting the plant or the fruit or till it's ready to be, have some, some of its product taken from it. And in the fall, uh, what you need to do is, unlike in the spring when you look at your last frost date, in the fall you look, you Google your first frost date. So Google your zip code or your town or whatever and average first frost date. You wanna count back the number of days from your, the plant killing frost for most of your plants, except for maybe broccoli or things that can handle a frost. You wanna count back from then till whenever you plan on planting and see if you have enough days. The other trick I've heard is you should add one to two weeks on your estimated time of what's listed there. And the reason you add that is because as we head towards the winter, you're getting less sunlight hours. The days are becoming shorter. And so it takes plants longer to grow. And so you definitely want to account for that. So let's get to, finally, my tips for fitting things into a small garden. My first tip is similar to any small garden is to think about containers in my garden i had uh, this one long container that i had not used this year i meant to but i just never got around to planting anything in it and so i filled it up with soil and i put some slow bolt slow bolt cilantro and some dill seeds in here so that i can have them in the fall or even though this is slow bolt cilantro, it'll still be useful that it's slow bolt in case we actually get a couple hot days in the fall. Um, so, you know, you can plant up things like this. You can also look at, for example, I have over here, you can see this is my, let me get the pot out. <laughs> over here, you can see this is my um, catnip plant. And it is definitely at the end of its cycle. And I am not actually planning on harvesting any for medicinal purposes or for any other purposes. And so I'm actually going to reuse this container here because it's the end of the cycle, end of the year. I'm gonna take out this plant and I'm gonna plant some herbs in here or maybe um, some uh, winter uh, radishes that do well in the winter, such as Asian radishes. So you can do something like that. You can think about what's sort of nearing the end of its cycle and I don't mind pulling out out of your bed or out of your containers to use. My second tip is to don't worry about having a full block of space for something. Um, tuck in, and this is a tip I got from the lady at the farmer's market who I was like, I don't know where to fit any of my stuff. She's like, just tuck it in here or there. And I was like, yeah, okay, that's right. I can do that. And her, you know, it's a good tip tuck in the plants make sure they'll be in a place they can get enough sunlight but tuck in plants where you're pulling out other things or maybe where you have a plant that didn't do really well um, or just where there's a space you never got to planting or maybe something just didn't grow uh, let me show you an example of where I tucked in a couple of plants um, that I planted in July uh, for my fall garden 
down here between my coxcomb plants that have become very bushy and gone wild and kind of taking over the path even here. Um, and, uh, you know, I had my garlic growing along the edges of this square foot bed. And when I pulled the garlic, the coxcomb was actually quite small. Um, and in early July, I planted some zinnia seeds. So they're getting pretty far along. They're not quite at the stage where you're putting out buds yet. And I actually need to take one of these out because there's two growing in the same spot. But here I have three zinnia plants that uh, hopefully I will have growing this um, fall and have some fresh color in the garden out of that I, just in this little space, it's probably only what? A foot long, <laughs> maybe a foot and a half wide. And I just tucked them in there. I kept them well watered. And um, now we'll, ha we'll have some additional flowers in our garden this year. Another example of tucking plants into corners are these edamame. I planted the seeds in early July. A friend of mine came to visit and we were looking over each other's seeds and she had a few left in one packet and she gave it to me so I thought oh, I'll just plant them up and see how they do. Uh, you can see <laughs> groundhog has gotten to one a little bit here. Um, overall they a few have died but they're doing pretty healthy and I, I think I had some parsley. I still have a little bit there. Um, and some other herbs here um, and you know I just as I as they got pulled out or died I just planted the edamame here. I also planted some now these were starts I bought from the farmers market of broccoli plants there's six in this space and this is kind of a space I just didn't get to planting up this year because the peppers I got them in and it turns out just like by the time I got them in, I was pulling out the beets. And so I have this space here. It's, it's about, they're not as well spaced as I like, right? The, the, <laughs> the, uh, the broccoli are not as well spaced as I'd like, but uh, they're, they're well spaced enough that hopefully we can get some, some, good, out, some good stuff out of them. Um, and the bridal tool is on them, obviously, to keep the uh, butterfly that, that lays the cabbage worm um, cabbage caterpillar eggs on them uh, from from accessing them I will need to put a stake in there like a few stakes in there and a bigger piece of bridal tool and weight it down on the edges but this was sort of an interim solution in the meantime I did a little clip of planting them so I'll, I'll show you that uh, of planting these seedlings so I'll show you that now My third tip is to consider, when, you, when you're figuring out where you're going to plant your fall garden, think about your future plans for the garden. And the reason this is important is because, for example, that raised bed I just showed you where I planted some zinnias. I don't want to plant anything over there that I can't, that I won't be able to, I can't plant anything in that bed that will need to sit there over the winter for now. And the reason being is that I actually plan to double the height or the depth of that raised bed so that I can grow tomatoes in it next year. I wasn't able to this year. I had to pivot at the last minute because we had the pesticide treatment of termites along our foundation. Um, and luckily they stopped treating, they stopped the treatment, another helicopter, or maybe the same one circling. They stopped the treatment right before the bed, but still, to be safe, I really don't want to grow it when there's only six inches of soil above this, this regular ground line. So I'm actually going to add another six inches of soil to that bed, and I need to do that in the fall because I want to plant garlic in that bed for the winter. And so I did not plant up the broccoli, which needs to be planted now. I, I did not plant up that crop 
in the bed that I know I'm going to have to basically amend in a matter of what? To, in two months, right? Because I plant in two, in two to two and a half months because I plant the, the garlic in November. Um, so I'm going to need to do things with that bed after the flowers die off from the frost. And because broccoli can handle a, a frost and actually does pretty good with that, I just didn't want to have to worry about working around that area. So that's my third tip. And my fourth tip is actually applied to what um, I just mentioned, which is garlic. Garlic is something that you plant in the fall, usually around November, after the frost, after a lot of your plants have died, after the leaves are falling and you can gather them up to put them on the bed to cover it. You're gonna plant that in November. And so just make sure to leave space in your plans for tucking things into your fall garden for any winter crops you wanna have, sometimes kale, is also one you can start now that usually lasts into the winter, unless you have a really, really bad winter. And even then, sometimes they last. Um, and so think um, about what winter crops you wanna grow in addition to these fall crops and how they're gonna interact with each other. And even now, I'm gonna say, when you're thinking of the winter crop, also think about in relation to the spring. So if you recall, when I planted my garlic last year, I planted it around the outside of the bed, not knowing that it would actually like shoot up and make it very hard to get into the middle of the bed for my spring crops and summer crops because you don't harvest it until June. So this next year I'm actually going to be planting it in rows in the back so the rest of the bed is accessible in the spring. All right, so those are my four tips. I hope that'll get your thought process going. Um, you know, and there's another option which is also to go up. You can also do vertical gardening of different types. I have not done a lot of experimenting with vertical gardening, meaning having different layers of height. Um, this next year I hope to get more into that, but uh, you could also consider some hanging baskets for herbs or some other places you might be able to tuck it into the garden. Um, and I hope this inspires you. If you have some tips that I missed or some additional suggestions, I'd love to hear it. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you aren't already a subscriber, please consider doing so. And uh, otherwise, I'll see you next time.